everybody, it's Michael, your campus minister with King Catholic, wishing you a happy Wednesday and a happy and joyful memorial of St. Philip Neri. That's today's feast day in the church calendar. Um, our church has so many different saints, and each day there's a different saint that can be remembered or celebrated, and particular saints receive things called memorials or feasts. Uh, today's a memorial where there's a, a mass for St. Philip Neri. Now, who is St. Philip Neri, you might be asking, and why am I bringing him up today? Well, first of all, he is the patron saint of joy, and that is such an important virtue that is just amazing for us to be able to, to learn about someone who, who lived such a life where they were tagged with the number one quality in their life was godly joy. How can you and I be joyful like that? How, what can we learn from him? In that sense. And reason number two is, Michael, why are you at bringing up St. Philip Neri today? Well, I have a special place for him in my heart. I'm a secular oratorian, which means I'm a lay person, but I'm a part of the oratory of St. Philip Neri, which is like a, a community. It's a religious group. Um, primarily, it's made up of priests and brothers, but there is a secular or lay component, which means that individuals who are not professed religious, those who might be single or married or just living in the world, um, can be part of this oratory and spirituality. So first, I just want to give you guys a little bit of background on St. Philip and why he's so dear to my heart and why, why I choose to follow this path as a secular oratorian. Um, so St. Philip was actually, and fun fact for us, he is the founder of the oratory, of which our patron for our Newman Club, St. John Henry Newman, is a part of. So there's a connection right off the bat with our Newman Club. So St. Philip was often called the second apostle of Rome after St. Paul. He brought joy and love of God to the city during a time of great need, in a time when the life of faith in Rome was really lacking. There's a lot of corruption in the church. There was a lot of upheaval in the moral life going on around him in Rome. And St. Philip, um, he worked with many of the youth of the city. He met them where they were in their faith lives. He didn't try to say, you should be here, but he met them where they were and encouraged them to be good. And to be good, and he'd also add teasingly to them, be good if you can, because he was very familiar with the human condition. He would encourage. He was um, a stickler for holiness, but a stickler in joy that wanted people to be able to encounter Christ, and the young people in the city especially to encounter Christ. And how much is that today, where we live in such a culture where there's so much struggle and strife and sadness that we need um, the joy of God in our lives, and we need people like St. Philip to be able to bring that love and that joy to others. So what did St. Philip do? Well, he preached the importance of daily reception of the Eucharist and also frequently frequent confessions. These are two important things in the life of us um, as Catholics. And he would spend all day in the confessional, and he would also stop what he was doing at any time to hear confessions so that no one would ever be without the chance to repent and to come back to God at any time. He lived and breathed the Holy Spirit, and his heart was inflamed by God's love so much to the point where his heart physically emitted he, and when he drew others close to him, to his heart, he comforted them, and they'd be calm and experience the effects of being physically relieved of anxiety and fear while feeling the warmth of God's love and mercy. St. Philip, like I said, he's particularly dear to me, and as a part of the secular oratory, we, we try to live by the four pillars of St. Philip's life, which are prayer, humility, love, and joy. And those are four pillars that I think are appropriate to anyone in their own life that we can live in the spiritual life. Prayer, we need to speak with God on a frequent and regular basis. Humility, recognizing that we are not in charge, but it's God that's in charge, and that we are to follow his will if we are to be happy. Love, love of neighbor, love of God, laying down our lives for one another and joy, joy which is so much deeper than happiness, joy which says that I am loved, I am a beloved child of God, and our lives should just 
gush forth with that. Now, is that easy to live on a daily basis? No. But St. Philip reminds us, and as we've experienced this past week with the celebration of Pentecost, in order to live this, we need to live fully in the Holy Spirit. And my friends, that's what we're called to do each day of our lives as Christians. Because we're called that even though things might be difficult around us, to still remember that God is in charge and that God has this. He's got you. And that's why with St. Philip, we can try to live our lives and remember this way that cheerfulness strengthens the heart and makes us persevere in a good life. St. Uh, Pope Francis has often said, there's no place for sourpuss sinners, for sourpuss saints, rather. Um, because in order to be close to God is a way of life that, that can bring us joy, knowing that we are loved, knowing that we matter. And we can bring that, and that can help us to persevere in living good lives for the Lord. Because if we're going to be followers, disciples of Jesus Christ, we want to bring that joy to other people, a great witness to the life of Christ. And we, we've talked about this before. How do I, in my daily life, bring the life of Christ to others? How can I preach the gospel? It seems intimidating. Joy. Can I be authentically joyful and in good spirits of knowing that even when things are down, I can trust in the Lord as my rock and as my Savior. And it's not always easy. But St. Philip can point to us, uh, can point us towards God. Whenever you see a picture, uh, an icon of St. Philip, he's always like this. It's one thing pointing to himself and his other hand pointing towards heaven. He points to himself. He draws people in by his affability and his joy. And he points towards heaven because that's the purpose of why we should be joyful. To help other people to encounter Christ so that they can en encounter him and that we can all be in heaven one day. And this doesn't disregard the daily struggles or worries or fears that we have. It embraces them. Because at the end of the day, we know that God loves us. So, a prayer to St. Philip that I absolutely love, and I pray every day, is as follows. And I encourage you guys, pray with me. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O holy St. Philip Neri, patron saint of joy, you who trust the scriptures promise that the Lord is always at hand, and that we do not have need of anxiety about anything. In your compassion, heal our worries and sorrows, and lift the burdens from our hearts. We come to you as one who swells with love for God and all creation. Hear us, we pray, especially in our needs. Take this time to offer whatever burdens you might be carrying, and ask St. Philip to intercede for you. We pray together, keep us safe through your loving intercession. And may the joy of the Holy Spirit, which filled your heart, St. Philip, transform our lives and bring us peace. Amen. So I've included a couple links for you guys as well um, to check out more on the life of St. Philip. If you're interested, or feel free to reach out. But he's a great saint and a great role model to follow, a great model of faith. And we honor him today with this memorial feast at Mass. And we pray, St. Philip, teach us how to be joyful. And teach us how to grow closer in love and in relationship with Jesus Christ, our Savior. So, on behalf of uh, all of us at King Catholic, God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Remember, stay joyful. God loves you.